Hi, I'm Mike Dooley, president of EAA Chapter 91, and this is my RV-8. Just became a certified aircraft in August of this year. I uh, got interested in building an aircraft a uh, long time ago, probably when I was 15 years old. Never had the opportunity. I went in the Army for 30 years and retired in 2006. I went to Air Venture in 2007. That was my first experience with the Experimental Aircraft Association and Air Venture. And uh, I knew I wanted to build something, so I, I literally looked at all of the kit aircraft on the grounds in 2007. I got up early and I stayed late and I collected brochures every night and thinned it down pretty rapidly to a small handful of companies, Vans being one of them. And I had signed up for an orientation ride in Vans aircraft there on the grounds, uh, had a great ride and came back here to the Lee Summit and some of our chapter members in Chapter 91 had RVs of various kinds and uh, I sold myself on the RV-8. And uh, I've always had a thing for P-51 Mustangs and I knew I never could afford one of those. And uh, so this is kind of appearance wise at least as close to a Mustang as I'm ever gonna get. And you'll see that in my paint scheme. Uh, this paint scheme was done by uh, John Starr who teaches a forum at Oshkosh on the aircraft as art. And uh, my plan is to fly the aircraft for about a year and then have John painted up in this Mustang tribute scheme. Uh, building the eight, um, new experience for me. I've, I've done a lot of woodworking, uh, a lot of composite work when I was young, but I'd never done any sheet metal work at all. And so the idea of putting together a predominantly metal aircraft with driven rivets, you know, was a little daunting at first, but I took a forum at Oshkosh and as the instructor said, go home and pound 200 more and then go buy your kit, whatever kit you're gonna get. And I did just that. I did a lot of practice rivets. I did Vans uh, practice toolbox kit. I did the uh, small aileron cross section kit and just pounded a lot of rivets and scrap metal before I actually ordered the RV-8 kit. This is a standard built kit. I had more time than money, like a lot of builders. And uh, so I decided to go with standard built. I learned a lot from a lot of other guys here in the chapter who had already built RVs. So for me, it was a great build experience. I really didn't have any issues, you know, building the uh, airframe. And I had taken some wiring uh, classes, electrical classes, electronic classes when I was in college. So the wiring for me was, was a lot of fun actually. Um, went a little bit hot rod on the engine. This is powered by a Lycoming Thunderbolt IO390. So 210 horsepower, Hartzell constant speed propeller. The panel is somewhat traditional in the aircraft. It's a combination of steam gauges and a, a few modern pieces that I picked up. I do have a Dyna D10A EFIS and I have an Advanced Flight Systems 2500 engine monitor. Now I've got both of those as uh, new old parts if you want to think of it that way. Some guys had purchased those and changed their mind and wanted to go with something newer electronically. But for me, uh, what that meant was a bargain. So the electronics that I have are uh, perhaps old by today's standard, but they work great and they suit me. I started flying back in uh, the 1970s and got my pilot's license in 1973. And I actually got out of aviation for 23 years. So for me, I wanted to be comfortable in this airframe from the very first second I sat in the cockpit. So that's why I went with some of the uh, steam gauge choices that I went with. And um, I do have a safety trim system in it to handle the electronic trim. And I do have a, a flap controller that allows me to control the, fl the flaps with front stick, back stick, or a panel stick uh, switch as well. So a few little modern upgrades in terms of black box technology kind of behind the scenes, but uh, pretty straightforward otherwise as far as the build goes. What would you, uh, what words of wisdom would you have since you just recently finished this RV-8 for people who are just getting started or maybe you're thinking about getting started sure. on building an airplane? What would you suggest? Well, a few things. First, you have to want to build an airplane or you're never going to finish it. You have to want to come out into your workshop with a smile on your face and, and get with it and, and have fun doing it. And uh, even though my build process was long, time-wise, uh, life intervened sometimes. Um, I enjoyed all aspects of the build. I did, really didn't have anything that uh, 
I disliked or didn't look forward to in terms of the build process. So I think that's number one. You have to want to build an airplane. Number two, pick the airplane of your dreams. That kind of goes hand in hand with what I said a moment ago about wanting to come out in the workshop with a smile on your face. And if you come out into the workshop and you're looking at, you know, an aircraft of your dreams, you'll have that smile on your face. You're gonna wanna, wanna push forward and finish the aircraft. The uh, other thing is don't be afraid to reach out and ask others for assistance. And there's a lot of it available online through various forums. And there's a lot of it available through your local EIA chapter with technical counselors or others who have built RVs before. If the uh, kid of your dream is an RV, there's plenty of them out there. And don't be afraid to ask. Uh, guys are willing to travel long distances to help you. I have traveled uh, over 100 miles to help guys learn to rivet just as a chapter present, you know, reaching out to other builders. And uh, I've taught several riveting classes and enjoyed doing that. And there are others like me out there that are happy to do that. EAA also has a number of programs. The Sport Air Workshops are great if you can get to one of those in your area. And of course, there's always the free forums up there at Oshkosh. And so in my case, I'm a woodworker. In terms of background, I built a metal airplane. And it surprised a lot of my family members. They're like, you're doing what? I mean, what do you know about sheet metal? I'm like, nothing, but I'm going to learn. It translates. you have to have that attitude. And it translates you're pretty, gonna, pretty you're well. You're going to pick up new skills along the way, whether it's the sheet metal or working with the composite pieces or wiring, what have you. You're going to learn a lot of things along the way. And uh, if you go into it with a smile on your face, you're going to have a good time doing it.